Hi, I'm John, welcome to Premium Builds. It's tough shopping for motherboards at the budget end of the B660 range. We've been scouring the market looking for an option that has the right blend of features, affordability and performance. Is the ASRock Pro RS the answer to our prayers? In this review, we're gonna find out. We'll take a look at its features and its performance. We've tested this board out with an i5-12600 and an i7-12700K, and we've built it into a number of PC configurations so that we've got a feel for how easy it is to set up, integrate into a PC, and also test different memory specifications and things like that on it. Overall, we feel we've got a good handle on this motherboard now. There are a couple of caveats with it we really want to highlight to you if you are considering buying it, but we'll find those out in the course of this review. First of all, let's take a look around the board and look at its features and specification. We can see that the CPU power is courtesy of an 8-pin CPU power socket, which is plenty to supply any CPU you'd sensibly fit to this board. The VRM is an 8-phase setup to the CPU core, and whilst it's not particularly high-end, it is perfectly adequate for an i5 CPU. There's heat syncing to all the important parts of the VRM power setup. Unfortunately, the caveats around this motherboard do come from power limits, and we'll talk about that more in the performance section of this review. For RAM, there are four RAM slots taking DDR4 RAM, and it quotes speeds up to 4800 MHz, although that is for a single stick, and more sensible RAM kit options are up to 4000 MHz. Again, we'd recommend you check out our review of DDR4 RAM on Alder Lake if you want some advice as to what the best RAM to buy is. For storage options, you've got two M.2 storage slots. The top one is PCIe 4.0, and this one is PCIe 3.0. It's got a set of boot diagnostic LEDs located just by the second PCIe slot. There's also an E-key Wi-Fi slot here for a small Wi-Fi card. There are four SATA ports in the lower corner of the board here. For PCIe slots, the top one is PCIe 4.0 at X16. The lower slot is PCIe 3.0 via the chipset and is X4. This single length PCIe slot is X1, PCIe 3.0, but it does have an open rear to the slot so you can fit a longer card at reduced bandwidth there if needs be. The audio setup is the ALC897 codec and is relatively basic. For cooling options, you've got the CPU fan header in the top corner here. There's a secondary CPU fan or water pump header as well. And then there are three chassis fans located along the bottom edge of the board here and up towards the rear for an exhaust fan. That's pretty good fan specification for a board of this budget. There are also multiple RGB headers located on this board, which enable you to run a range of RGB options. The board itself has some RGB LEDs on the rear, which are customizable with ASRock's Polychrome Sync software. It's a nice little additional touch. If we move to look at the rear of this board, you can see that you've got six USB slots in total, with four of them being the highest speed 5 gigabit per second and two of them being USB 2.0. For video out, you've got both DisplayPort and HDMI or outputs. The LAN is a simple 1 gigabit per second Ethernet LAN port, which is relatively basic but acceptable at the price. The audio is courtesy of three 2.5 mm jacks, although there is front panel output as well. Finally, there is a legacy PS2 port at the rear as well for connecting an older mouse or keyboard. The rear I.O. panel itself is a fairly cheap metal affair, just a single layer of pressed tin with some basic markings on it which aren't particularly easy to read. It's acceptable at the price. Notice also it's got the cutouts ready prepared for an aerial to be fitted if you do fit in the add-in Wi-Fi card. The principal emissions from this board are really just that it doesn't have a USB-C port on the rear. If you do require USB-C connectivity, we'd advise you get a case with that on the front panel because this board does have the connector internally and you can make those ports live on the front of your case. This is a competent, if basic, overall specification. It's nice to have those multiple PCIe slots, two M.2 slots, and it's got adequate USB on the rear port as well. It does have both HDMI and DisplayPort outputs if you're going with that integrated GPU on the CPU. Obviously, it's using PCIe 4.0 for that main slot, not PCIe 5.0, but given that devices don't exist to that specification yet, and given the expected level of components we anticipate people connecting to this board, we think that's an acceptable compromise to make and a very sensible cost-cutting measure for ASRock to have used here. That secondary M.2 slot is of course only PCIe 3.0 as well, so just be mindful of that and don't overpay for a drive to fit there. It may not operate at full speed. Overall, I think ASRock have done a good job of balancing features and upgradability on this board at the price point, and I think they've made an acceptable range of compromises here to get you a board that's still fully featured and fully functional at a reduced cost. If you're finding this review useful, please do just take a moment to click like and subscribe to our channel. It helps us out immensely and enables us to bring you this kind of content in the future.
talking about the BIOS. ASRock's BIOS is functional but somewhat rudimentary in appearance, but they do have a good number of options and it's pretty well laid out. There's easy and advanced modes, and you shouldn't need to do much in here beyond enabling XMP since there's no official CPU overclocking support. This board doesn't allow B-clock overclocking of non-K CPUs beyond a few megahertz, it doesn't have a separate B-clock generator, and relies on the CPU's internal generator, which means they remain locked. Overall, it's a perfectly good and competent BIOS, and we had no problems at all setting up the PC and installing Windows on a number of occasions with slightly different specifications. It gave us no problems in that regard whatsoever. However, the major problem with this motherboard did see us spend a significantly longer period of time in BIOS than we'd ideally like to, and that brings us on to our performance assessments. As part of our review process, we paired this board with both an i5-12600 and an i7-12700K and ran some performance metrics to see how it did. The results left us scratching our heads a bit, as this board significantly underperformed when compared to the Asus B660 Tough and also our MSI Z690 Tomahawk that we used as a control board. It was looking at power consumption that showed us what was up. Intel's default or recommended specification for the i5 non-K CPUs allows them 117 watts for short duration workloads, but then cuts that power limit to 65 watt long term to ensure stable operation and manageable heat. Most boards either use those defaults or else allow the CPU to run unlimited, which sees it draw 100 watts or so continuously. Logging power use through a long term workload showed that the ASRock Pro RS did neither of those things instead imposing a hard 85 watt cap on our Intel i5-12600 and a 120 watt cap on the i7-12700K. Consequently, the CPUs underperformed in demanding all-core workloads. We tried multiple fixes and adjustments in BIOS to try and rectify this behavior, adjusting power limits and other settings that relate to power. We were in touch with ASRock support, who in turn put us in touch with their BIOS support team who insisted this behavior wasn't normal. However, none of the suggested fixes that they offered worked to make this board perform properly. We can understand a power limit of 120 watts long term being applied to CPUs like the i7-12700K because ASRock may not want a board with the VRM specification of this to try and run a CPU at 200 watts continuously. That seems quite sensible to us. However, it is reasonable to expect normal full speed operation on an i5-12600 on this board and we weren't able to achieve that. Overall then, our experience of this motherboard was one that does underperform even with an i5 CPU and one that as rock working with us were unable to fix. If you want to find out more about the issues around power limits with this motherboard, we'd recommend you check out our linked video which goes into much more depth over the issues we faced. In terms of RAM performance, we ran both 3600MHz CL16 and 3200MHz CL16 kits, both 16 and 32GB. We had no problems whatsoever running those kits at XMP speeds and uh, we think that this board will operate absolutely fine with the vast majority of DDR4 RAM that you care to pair with it. So what can we conclude then about the ASRock Pro RS? Well, I actually delayed this review and my conclusions for a couple of weeks, and that was for two reasons. First, I wanted to give ASRock every opportunity to help me fix this problem. And secondly, I wanted to see how other boards behaved, so I delayed it for the testing of other budget B660 motherboards and had a look at their uh, response to different CPUs and how they applied power limits as well. We further tested this motherboard with the i3-12100F, which isn't really included in the main body of the review, although I'll show you some results now. It performed adequately with that CPU, although it did need some power limit tweaking to perform in multi-core workloads. We also took a look at how some other motherboards performed across the CPUs we've got available. Another week of working with ASRock, trying every setting possible and following their advice and the advice of the BIOS support team there, yielded no results. Ultimately, I was unable to get the i5 CPU performing adequately on this motherboard. Their final response was to tell me to send the board back to the retailer for a refund, thereby acknowledging that realistically this board isn't actually performing as they would expect it to and could be considered faulty. Now I know from messages some people have left me, both on comments uh, sections on the videos and also on uh, sources like Reddit and other forums, that uh, this board can perform okay with an i5-12400 and they report normal performance with that CPU, but other people actually also reporting problems with those same CPUs, the 12400s and 12400Fs. That indicates that there's just inconsistency in this board and obviously without hands-on testing and knowing how to control variables, you can never quite be sure of exactly what people are doing and what they consider acceptable performance. My experience of this board unfortunately is one that doesn't perform and one that I can't make perform adequately with what is actually quite a run-of-the-mill CPU. It could just be that this i5-12600 has somehow fallen through the cracks of ASRock's testing or their specifications that are included in BIOS for how to run a CPU correctly, in which case I'd expect to see it get fixed with a BIOS fix in the near future. 
One of the other boards we tested, the Gigabyte DS3H, also showed really shockingly bad performance with the CPUs until we applied an up-to-date BIOS on it, and then it actually performed normally, although it did have some other problems, which you can see in my uh, testing video. Nonetheless, that sort of uh, shift in performance with a BIOS update does indicate that this could be an issue that can be fixed in BIOS, and I really hope ASRock will get onto that, provided the board itself is actually physically capable of running these CPUs to potential. Now we've seen some testing from Hardware on Box, for example, on the thermal VRM performance of the ASRock HDV, and that's a board that I didn't buy because having experienced last generation's version of it, I felt that it was simply not going to be adequate, and it's not a board I would ever recommend. I was really interested to know if they had an affordable option that I was able to recommend as a good budget option to run i5 CPUs. The ASRock Pro RS isn't that board. Ultimately then, I'm unable to recommend this motherboard for use with anything other than an i3 CPU. Even then, you need to check and adjust those power limits to get it operating optimally. That's a real shame. There needs to be affordable options for people to get these great i5 CPUs running well without spending you know, nearly $200 on high-end motherboards. This board at $140 is simply not worth it. There are other boards with equivalent feature sets, but that we can verify the performance of. If you are looking for a cheaper motherboard to run an i5 CPU well, so far the boards that we've found that do that are the Asus Prime range. They look to be quite a good option at the moment. However, I am preparing a B660 motherboard roundup which will cover all of the options, taking into account all of the testing I've done and the information available online about performance of various motherboards in order to make the very best recommendations to you. So between this Pro RS and the HDV models in the B660 range, ASRock have actually done some serious damage to the trust we can place in their brand. They're meant to offer a really good value alternative, but we can see here that they're offering motherboards that simply don't perform. That's really disappointing and it means we can't recommend them. I really hope that they'll take this criticism on board and start to really look at how they can offer those great value products with a good feature set at a reasonable price other brands are showing that it's not impossible to do, and ASRock just really need to step their game up if they want to remain in the market. And it, particularly when you're starting to see some other lesser known brands come forward with some boards that are getting good reviews, can run these CPUs to full potential, and will quickly replace them in the market if they don't up their game. I really hope you found this review useful. If you have, please do click like and subscribe to the channel. We've got a full roundup of B660 motherboards coming up. Please do also check out premiumbuilds.com. We've got loads of information and advice there for you to get the absolute best value out of your next PC.